Hi and welcome. Welcome particularly to all my new subscribers. It is great to have you here. Today we are going to look at Edexcel IGCSE. We're going to look at paper one and we're going to look at something called a specimen paper. Now because the course is relatively new there's only one past paper from 2019 at the date of making this video which is January 2020. So Edexcel very kindly put together specimen papers to look at kind of the standard of what what to expect really, how what these questions are going to be like. So today we're going to look at one of those, we're going to look at the paper one. And for paper one we're going to look at question three. So here is question three and we've got someone called Laura who is playing games, online games, with other people. Laura noticed that her character's actions are not in time with the other player's characters. Which one of these would need to be reduced to improve Laura's online gaming experience? Now, it isn't bandwidth, it isn't storage, it is latency. So the correct answer there is latency, that is the delay. And the clue there is that a character's actions aren't in time with other, other characters, so there's a bit of a delay. So she'd need to decrease that delay in order to be able to keep up with the other characters. Right, here is an interesting question, and one that trips a few people up. So it's quite good to go through that now. It's 3B, a Blu-ray disc is listed as being able to store 50 gigabits of data. And just as I said, gigabits, not gigabytes. It's gigabits, which is the unit of measurement that Edexcel use. So you must be thinking of that, 1,024, not 1,000. Construction expression to show how many bits there are in 50 gigabits. Now, some people, when they do this, they want to work that out. Now, the thing to remember is you haven't got a calculator in this exam. If you look at this badly drawn, apologies for my drawing skills here, but a badly drawn pyramid, um, you can see how that works. So, the very top, I've got a bit. A bit is smallest amount of data you can have it's either one or zero just like two conditions one or zero there are eight bits in a byte so i'll put times by eight a thousand and twenty four bytes in a kibby bytes thousand and twenty four kibby bytes in a mebby byte and a thousand twenty four mebby bytes in a gibby byte it isn't one thousand and this is the unit measurement that Edexcel use and as I've said in previous exam questions you won't get marks if you round it down to a thousand. So all you are being asked to do here is to construct an expression. I have not got a calculator. I do not need to work it out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down 50 to construct my expression. Okay, because that's that's what I'm working with. It's 50. 50 gigabit bytes, gigabytes. So I've written that down there. And now if I look at my pyramid here, I've got one, two, three. So it's going to be to the power of three. I'm going to need to multiply that by that, then by that, then by that. So to get this into bits, I need to multiply this time. I'm going to multiply. So it's 50 times multiplied by 1024. That is a one there. Okay. Now I can write at that times 1024 times 1024, or I can simply just do to the power of three or cubed there, rather than write the whole lot out. Trying to save time here, trying to save the amount of writing we need to do. So I'm just going to write it like that. So that would get me down to uh, bytes. So what I'd need to do then is to multiply that by 8 to give me the number of bits. And there is my expression. It is 50 times 
1024 to the power of 3, so that means 1024 times 1024 times 1024 multiplied by 8. And that is my expression, and I do not need to work that out. I do not have a calculator, Mr. Tam. I do not need to work that out. So exam tip, you do not calculate that. Do not sit there the best part of 20 minutes trying to work that out. Don't do that. You just ask to construct an expression. There's your expression. You do not need to work that out. Okay? So, when given a question like that, you are not asked to work it out. You have not got a calculator. You need to create an expression. You need to construct an expression. It should look something like that. Remember, to get down to bits, I need to multiply. And I'm multiplying by 1024. And when I get down to the bytes, I need to multiply by 8 because, as I said before, there are 8 bits in a byte. Next question 3C. Which one of these is used to identify a games console on a network? Is it a SIM? Is it MAC? HTTP? Or is it Neofield Communication? Now, couldn't possibly be SIM, couldn't possibly be HTTP because that's a protocol and it couldn't be near field communication because that is used to make contactless payments. It is a MAC address, Media Access Control. What that is, is the unique address assigned to all hardware that is on the network. It has its address of assigned to it on manufacture and it stays with it. So it's the MAC address. The next question, because of my camera, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to show the first two images, then I'm going to show the second. I need to identify from four images a device that uses solid state storage. So is it going to be this? I'm not told what this is, but this is a USB stick. This is a magnetic hard drive. Could it be this, which is a Blu ray disc? Or could it be this, which sort of like one of those images that you kind of identify what it is. It's not particularly easy to see, but what they've got there is magnetic tape. It's actually a tape there. Okay. The answer, however, is that it is A. And A is a USB drive. That is the only device that uses solid state storage. None of the others do. 3E1, explain one benefit of using magnetic storage with a games console. The only answer here is that it is, well, there's two, actually there's two potential answers here. It's cheaper than solid state and it has more capacity. Because of it, it's cheaper, it's usually got more capacity because it's cheaper to buy, so therefore it can be bigger. There's a little bit of overkill here. I don't need to write this much, which is two marks, but it's cheaper, more storage capacity, and can hold more games. Now, if you're any, in any doubt in your exam, I would, I would really explain things like that to make sure you've really got those two marks there. So E2, explain one benefit of using solid state storage with a games console. Solid state storage is faster than magnetic. It, you do not need to wait for the disc to start spinning, and it needs to get up to up to 10,000 RPM, so it takes a while for it to get loaded to start up. Solid state storage doesn't have that, it has no spinning discs, and therefore is ready immediately. So solid state storage has faster access time, so games will load faster. And there's my model answer for that one, for two marks. Right, F. This question is, is one of the reasons why I love ICT. It is so relevant. Probably a lot of you guys play games on a regular basis, so you have these games consoles. So it's just writing about what you've got. Recommend one peripheral device that can be used with a games console to enhance the user experience when gaming. Give a reason for your answer. So you can have loads of stuff there that maybe you've got at home. You could have a steering wheel. VR headset, uh, you could have headphones to provide immersive sound experience, but you must provide the device and you must give a reason for two marks. 
So here is my model answer. I put virtual reality headset to provide an immersive experience. 3G, here is a very, very typical Edexcel question. They love questions like this, proprietary operating system. Proprietary operating system means it is A, it is owned by a company. So you've got two types of software there. You've got proprietary and open source. Proprietary means you buy it, it's owned by a company, and you can't really change anything with the software if you wanted to. Open source means it's usually free, it is owned by everyone, it's made by someone, but it's put out there, open source, and people can edit it, they can change it, they can change, change the operating system. So think of proprietary, an example would be Microsoft Windows, and open source, an example would be Linux, and the development there. Ubuntu. Right, as is typical with this paper, we are jumping about here. We're trying something different now. A smartphone can be used to play games, make calls, and take photographs. State the term used to describe this type of device. It is an example of convergence. It's lots of technologies in one, but the device is multifunctional. So the correct answer to that is multifunctional. I. Which one of these is a benefit of using a VPN for gaming? Now, it provides access to geo-restricted games. What does that mean? Geo means short for geography so restriction on geographical area in certain countries you may not be able to play certain games so you can get past that with using a VPN this is question J I've just moved the paper down a bit Laura receives an email identify three items in figure two that may cause Laura to believe this intent at all so if we look at that Things that jump out there. Google Mail. That doesn't look right, does it? Here. Open within five minutes of receiving. Most emails from banks, respected companies, will not require you to do that. Here. Generic account holder. I'm not addressing her as Laura or Ms. or Mrs., whatever her name is. Other things there. We have got typos cancelled there. The typo that you could pick out. We have got a problem there. PDF, but it's an executable file. If you download that, and at huge problems. So just noted down there some of the things I've just said. You can write more if you want, you can explain things. I think in the exam that, that should be enough. You point out exe file, obviously opening the exe file is a big problem and potentially download viruses onto your computer or spyware, malware, anything like that. And last, but by no means least, question K, 3K, state the term used for the type of email shown in figure 2. It is a phishing email. It wants you to either download that file or it wants you to click on the link and enter some details. And then it's going to take all your money. So it's phishing for personal details. That is the phishing email. Now, the mark scheme specifically says do not accept spam. So don't write spam for something like that. It's quite different to a spam email. A spam email is just an advert that goes out. This is something more sinister. 
it wants your details, it wants you to put in your details, it wants you to download the executable file and make the criminals, make the crims, very, very rich by doing stuff like that. If enough people do that, then you're going to be rich. You're going to get all your money, all different people's money. They don't have to work, they just, just do their crimes. So the correct answer there is phishing. So that is 19 marks. Thank you very much for watching. Please, in the comments below, if you have any questions, just let me know. Like it, subscribe. I hope this has helped. Thank you, guys.